Congressman Ron Paul retiring at the end of this term after a long, long time of service had his last showdown with Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke yesterday. Here's a clip. The very first step is transparency and for us to know we have a right to know and you may be correct in your assumption at least I'm sure you believe this but maybe I should be talking to the Congress that we should stand up and say yes we demand to know Congress is expected to vote on Ron Paul's audit the Fed bill next week Congressman Ron Paul joining us now from Capitol Hill Gee, it's, your, it's gonna be a, your last face-off uh, with Ben Bernanke must be a little disappointing because you, you're able to vent <laughs> in those sessions for all the, the the work you did on the Fed and you had as, as much influence as you probably could possibly hope to get on the Fed in your position in Congress over the past couple of years did you did you make any progress are you satisfied that you changed the Fed in some way to make them more accountable well, I think so. I think they've responded, uh, at least superficially. Uh, we get it more information. They respond to lawsuits, and, and that's been helpful. And there was uh, some demands from uh, uh, Dodd-Frank bill. Uh, the chairman now has press conferences. But I think it's mostly superficial. We're not getting down to the nitty-gritties of knowing what happens and how, how the deals are made and how they bail out companies and what happened uh, with $15 trillion, you know, in the emergency and what they might be doing now with currency swaps and what they plan to do if there's uh, an ongoing crisis in Europe. So, no, uh, we're making progress. But, you know, as far as the Fed in general is concerned, we make tremendous progress outside. Uh, our campaign was uh, emphasizing that issue. A lot of young people are studying the Fed. Uh, we haven't made as much progress here in Washington, but because there's so many people outside of Washington wanting to care, I think this is the reason we're going to have a vote on the bill next week. And the bill is called Audit the Fed. But let me just play devil's advocate here, Congressman. Uh, you talk about more transparency. I remember covering Alan Greenspan's Federal Reserve, and there was nothing. You got basically nothing except the statement and the minutes, and that was it. Now they give the news conferences to his credit that has really been driven by Ben Bernanke. What else do you want to see? If there was one thing that they said, all right, you get to pick. You get one thing you want to know about the Fed, and we'll reveal it. What is that? What thing do you see that is really of, of import at this point to everybody who's watching? I would say it's the correspondence and negotiation the deals made overseas. And that is what they cling to the most. And Bernanke claims that he needs independence, but what he wants is secrecy. He says there'll be chaos if we know. And even my bill, I think it's rather weak. It has nothing to do with monetary policy. And he's claiming it will have all kind of ramifications that we will immediately change how he acts. No, it would be the embarrassment of we knowing what he does and how he talks to other countries, other central banks, who gets bailed out and why they do it. But it would be, it will not be immediate. There is delay in getting this information. So, uh, yes, there would be a change, but we have a responsibility to know this, especially when you talk in the many trillions of dollars. His budget is much bigger than what the you know, Congress does. And it's interesting you mentioned the correspondence with what happens overseas, because quite recently, of course, with Barclays and the whole LIBOR scandal, right. we had the questions of what happened between the New York Fed, which, of course, is part of the big Federal Reserve, and Barclays Bank. It appears that the New York Fed, if not encouraging low-balling rates in a way that might have been against the law, were at least acknowledging that Barclays was doing that. Uh, is, is there going to be any action taken about the New York Fed because of this? Oh, that remains to be seen. I doubt if too much will happen. But, boy, I think your point is very important because I think if they knew that we would have access to all these records, they would be more transparent and they wouldn't assume, oh, we can do all this wheeling and dealing and planning. I mean, that is the job of the Fed, and they see it is so, so important that is fixing interest rates. I mean, they fix rates. So the economic principle is identical to banks and central banks, whether it's LIBOR or whether it's over, overnight rates here in this country, it has the same economic consequences. And I think an audit, if the audit of the Fed bill had been in place, we would have known a lot sooner about this and maybe it would never have occurred and there would have been no negotiations going on between uh, the, the banks and our Federal Reserve. We'd be remiss if we didn't ask you before you go. Uh, you'll be heading to the Republican National Convention. You're encouraging your delegates to still go. Uh, looking at Mitt Romney, uh, a lot of people are saying he hasn't put forth a jobs plan that has any real opportunity to really change things here. How do you feel about him as a candidate? 
Well, compared to whom? <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, he, he certainly uh, offers different things than the current president, but uh, I think the current conditions in this country make it rough for anybody, no matter what, because the conditions are in terrible shape. They've been uh, developing in this manner, in this direction, for many, many decades. So no matter who is to be president, they are going to have a very, very tough job because you have to re re reverse an entire way of thinking. Uh, no more deficits and less spending and change in foreign right. policy, change in our monetary policy. So it's going to be a major will, task will for you vote anybody. For, will you vote for Mitt Romney? I, I'm not, uh, I've not made a decision. Wow. By the way, your friend Peter Schiff was just on saying we are going into a recession. Do you think so too? Yeah, and if you took, if you look at these uh, many, many people unemployed, and if you go by the statistics of uh, of, of uh, Williams, you know, on uh, private stats, you know, 22% uh, are unemployed. So for them, we're in a depression, yeah. and uh, we're in bad shape. We're in much worse than the statistics shows. One reason I, th I hear from my young people that uh, like to come to my rally say, well, at least you're telling the truth. So they don't believe what government tells them. They don't believe that what they tell them about how well we're doing in Afghanistan. And they don't believe that the government tells them correctly how much inflation there is or how serious the economic problems are. 24 years of service. Congressman Ron Paul, we thank you. And by the way, his main service was delivering babies. 4,000 <laughs> babies were delivered by this doctor. Are you going to go it, it deliver may, more babies in Texas? Yeah, it, it would be fun. And guess what? They didn't argue with me as much as the politicians <laughs> do. Thank you, doctor. Thanks.